Good afternoon in our central Pacific boom town of Honolulu in the March of 1975. And what happened then? We were actually looked a little different because we were, yes, we uh, I hate to say, we were teens and twins at that time. Yes, right? we were young people then. But uh, others were too, and the first picture shows one of them. This is our, uh, that's our local, that's our local boy bra barrack basically prepping to become our best president. Right, who in the 1970s was right here in Honolulu and he graduated from Punahou in 1979. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So during the time period we're talking about, mm -hmm. he was right here watching these, it all. Yeah. I was too. These were his coming out days. As yeah. were these, he was, he was on his way up. And beyond that, there was someone at the peak of his career. That's right, and that was Elvis Presley. And Elvis in 1973 did this amazing technological feat. He broadcast a live concert from the Honolulu International Center, today's Blaisdell Center, throughout the entire world, and it was called Elvis Aloha from Hawaii via satellite. Mm -hmm. Put us on the world map. Uh, put us on the world map. Well, we already did kind of were, but yeah, that yeah, didn't yeah. even work. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And since this show is also about the built environment. This show is uh, not about the built environment. We, we picked a piece that might be the most representative, at least for some part of uh, 1970s that's architecture. Right. And that's, and that's the Ward Warehouse. Number and that's where we look like we're sitting. Uh -huh. And there's the Ward Warehouse with uh, on the right. And... Uh, picture of a modern part of Honolulu on the left and Ward Warehouse is very much as you said an iconic structure of the 1970s. It doesn't have a lot of uh, applied decoration but it does have some of these circular forms mm -hmm. that reappear mm -hmm. in a number mm -hmm. of different places. Mm -hmm. But let's go back and start from the very beginning, very beginning. Uh, how that piece of land looked and, and was used much differently here. In well this is a photograph from 19. 40. Mm -hmm. And on in, in the center on the left, you can see there's a Theo H. Davies warehouse. That today is the site of Ward Plaza. And on the right-hand side, the Soranaka store that has fishing supplies, that strip, that's where Ward Warehouse is today. In mm -hmm. the foreground, you see those men doing something. They are working on fishing nets because Kewalo Basin was the center of where all the fishing boats came and went from Honolulu. These guys are at work. They're doing actual work. It's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm, a tourist mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. And the buildings that you see here are industrial. They're light industrial. There yeah, was nothing yeah, yeah. touristy about it. There was nothing upscale about it. It was a living, working neighborhood at mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. And the industrialization increased, right? You see the Absolutely. same side here. There's one uh, new iconic building in the middle, IBM building, but everything else is really, really ruggedly industrial. That's very, true. Very 60-ish. Right? And, and, and also, too, along uh, Ala Moana, you see there are a bunch of used car lots. Mm -hmm. And by the time Word Warehouse was constructed in the early 1970s, it replaced a lot of used car lots, and mm -hmm. that was a use of large open pieces of land before they were developed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then we saw something interesting happen, and let's go to our next picture, and that is the building of the Ward Warehouse. And here are two brochures, one from the 1970s when it first opened, and another one on the right from the 1980s. And Ward Warehouse was constructed to be, and we're going to be talking about that, a collection of different types of uh, not just tourist things, but things for local people. And uh, it was built intentionally not to be a long-lasting building. It was meant to be like a ward, like a, like a warehouse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this logo type is very appropriate from the 1970s. It opened in 1975. Just like the building itself, it's made of wood. Mm -hmm. And so they were playing up the natural wood surfaces, which at that point was very trendy and it mm -hmm. was very supposedly very honest and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. And in the next photograph, um, this was the only picture we could find. Yeah, and that's why we apologize for the low resolution and being a little blurry, but okay. literally. And we also thank the architect, Steve Owl, his wife, Irene, for allowing us to do this here and, and speak. Correct. about their project on behalf because also on their side there's very little there's very little Correct. left and, and, and unfortunately and Steve, yeah and Steve respectfully said um, I'm enjoying retirement I trust you guys doing this well right. so right. we went out and did our research and uh, and and as you could see in that 1975 picture the, again it's a very woody surface it's a natural surface and it the only decorations on it were what were called super graphics which yeah, yeah. were large geometric patterns that were painted on the side mm -hmm. Um, in 2005, the exterior of the building was completely painted a beige color. The roofs were made a teal color. 
to match the rest of the ward yeah, stuff, yeah. and it doesn't look the same as and, it did in And that weird beige is until now that weird color that the people yeah. pour over buildings or developers. That's right. Going back to that picture from the 70s, the, the dark brown was really like, there were these corduroy yeah. paints, right? Yes. They were dark brown. Yes. This, this car paint is dark brown, I, so is the building. Very, I, very I had brown corduroy I, flared I, pants. I, I figured. And I want to see you wearing them next time. Uh, them they're out. long gone. <laughs> okay. Um, and the thing that, that, that uh, was really influential on the appearance in the architecture of Ward Warehouse was in our next photograph, and that was a development that was called Sea Ranch that was built in Northern California. It was actually the development of a local Hawaiian company, Castle and Cook. This Sea Ranch was built as an upscale, exclusive, not overly expensive, but uh, trendy and particularly um, lifestyle-y uh, lifestyle mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And it is still in existence today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the architecture that was used in the early buildings, like the public buildings that they built, I just looked this all up after mm -hmm. we started talking about it, yeah. was very influential on things like the Ward Warehouse. Mm -hmm, in other words, mm -hmm. natural weathered wood, yeah. some super graphic paintings, yeah, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. then it became Ward Warehouse yeah. here. And architect Charles Moore, by the way, to complete the story to, who about was, Who it. was uh, Sea Ranch? And, and we go to the, to the next picture. Also the 70s, and, and there is actually a tipping point, but because there was the first uh, economically reasoned oil crisis, yeah. uh, not resource-based, yeah. which would fill a whole other show. Uh, which is another show. whole thing. But it was right in the middle of it. But as, you, as one can see here, this is a picture. You thought you had some from the 80s, but this is uh, from the early 2000s. This is 2000. Say, right? and, and Martin pointed out it's a very car-friendly situation, as uh, would be for anything mm -hmm. that has to mm -hmm. be successful today. Mm -hmm. uh, and even back in the 1970s, there's car access all along both you know, three sides of this, uh, mm -hmm. of, this, of this layout. And if we go to the next picture, we'll see the original layout of Here's what it looked like in 1975, the top story, the second story on the top part of this diagram. And below that, you see that there's buildings A, B, C, and uh, D, and a parking garage. And there's access all along that, as we just said, yeah, for parking. Yeah. We can call this clustered, so it's very sort of, you know, uh, small elements, you right, know, it's right. not a big chunky. No, it's not. Because the typology, we could say, here we go, and, and talking, introducing shopping malls, which we also are going to address another huge subject. a couple of other, other shows to it, right? right. So this is actually by its by its original true nature is is a mall yes, is it a little is. mall yes it is but it is not the uh, Victor Grun uh, introduction to America the enclosed hermetic wall Correct. this is an open right. so this is this is actually sort of uh, this is interpreted this is not an invasive it's a uh, it's an exotic version of it, it is it is um, I think let's go to our next picture and and see some of the other elements the. The, the ward, ward Warehouse, as you pointed out earlier, is different from uh, just a plain strip mall in that it's got a second story. Mm -hmm. I like to point out that there are these other elements that are a little bit out of the ordinary for what you would consider part of just a rectangular box building yep, of yep, a warehouse, yep. like this curved stairway. There are some other curved yeah, forms yeah. in the in the Ward Warehouse. And, and if you ask developers these days, they would never do that. No, they would expensive. say there's a second story is a no go. Yeah. And you see this here. There's some vacancies, more vacancies on the, on the top floor. Absolutely. But it was it was the idea of we can go to the to the next picture to not make that one story Correct. box. Correct. To make it an experience uh, right. having these iconic elements popping out, mm -hmm. right? Right, and it is not just a box, as you said. It's got these other elements that create a little more of an interest. It makes you want to sort of go and see what's on the other side, mm -hmm. rather than I can see the whole darn thing. Mm -hmm. And in the next picture, um, I think we're going to be looking at, uh, yeah, there again is our open space for cars. And I like, the, I like how the, the, the roof on the left and the right has got, for example, on the right, you see the trees are protruding through the holes in the roof. Mm -hmm. So it's a little more interest than it would mm -hmm. just be if mm -hmm. it was a regular warehouse. And you can see it as an as a interpretation of the good old American pioneering Main Street. Absolutely. Right? The shops. Yes. The, the saloons, you know. And the awnings. Left and right and the awnings. Right. And uh, in our next there, photograph. There is criticism, though, I was just talking uh, before the show, um, that there was criticism about that it's sort of blocking itself off from the ocean, from Alamoana Boulevard, 
which again, this is a heavily uh, a frequented route. If you open this up, you are going to invite the, the, the emissions and the noise. And the noise. So is, so I was just going to say exactly that. that. To do? No. I was just going to say that. It's mm -hmm. not that. The other side is the ocean, yeah, but you've got a yeah. six lanes. Which you thing. can see the harbor a little bit peeking right. through. And here's just another of these iconics. Uh, Steve Au's uh, body of work, we're going to dedicate uh, another show that's going to have two of his projects. One is his own house. It's very much in the sense of, of what warehouse. And in fact, it's originated in there, which you will point out. And the other one is Buzz's Steakhouse in Pearl Ridge. And there are which, similarities. Which is also very powerfully, iconically hovering uh, over. So it's, as you said, it's not the generic. This is, this is true passionate architecture I agree. Uh, on, on a, in a commercial typology, which is rather rare these days uh, for sure. Yeah. So we want to look a little bit more into the fine grain, into the details, right? Correct. So number, yeah. Yeah, and here's what, one thing that's very typical of Ward Warehouse, the exposed systems. You've got the conduits for electricity. You've got the pipes. You've got the air conditioning ducts. All of this was left exposed, and I think there are two reasons for that. The first was, as I said, this building was only supposed to last for 10 to 15 years before it was replaced. So there was no purpose mm -hmm. in covering all that up mm -hmm. and then having to demolish mm -hmm. it. But secondly, mm -hmm. in keeping with the 70s zeitgeist, as yeah. is a fabulous German word. You're um, welcome. I, no, no, no. <laughs> thank you, German people. Um, it is uh, more honest. Yeah, yeah. It, it comes across as more honest. We're not dressing it up. Yeah, yeah. We're showing you all yeah, the guts. Yeah. We're showing you but all the things. But talking veins. commercial typology, it's always about the money. It's always about the profit and getting it done the cheapest way so people will still like it. So in the years after, in the 80s and in the 90s, everything was hidden. You mm -hmm. had to make dropped ceilings and soffits and all this stuff, and right. all this stuff was hidden in there. Now, actually, things seem to come full circle. If you go to the Nordstrom Rec, for example, on... Uh, Kalakaua Avenue, they expose it again. So it's chic again, and, and on the side, it saves the developer a lot of money. That's right. That's exactly right. right. So everybody wins. And, 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 and even systems-wise, we get on the next picture, we, we subtitled this exhibitionist. Right? Yes. There was really this sort of obsessive, almost, celebration of, of systems as, as, as fire uh, right. rating here. Right. right. And actually, that's interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like, I still like to look at that yeah. thing, and, yeah. it, and it is sort of it's sort of artistic. It's, it's, and it's part of the experience. And it's right? part of the experience of Ward Warehouse. Oh, and there we are. are. We, we were also digging out um, a, a historic precedent um, for that. Um, that's the next picture. And um, this is uh, Centre Pompidou in Paris, built Correct. around the same time. And so we, we might say that this building is sort of a hybridization between Sea Ranch, as you pointed out right. before, and, and Centre Pompidou. And, it, and in this case, I've never seen this, but I, I, I'm aware that the whole point of this architecturally was that all of the systems were on the outside. Mm -hmm, no. And that was a big yeah. step at yeah, the time, yeah, no, yeah. which made the building very iconic and different from everything and, else. And talking about our twins, that's when I saw this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And we take this as a situation to take a little break here. All right. One minute uh, commercial break. And then we'll back. Be back then with uh, DeSoto and Martin and Ward Warehousing. I'm Carol Mon Lee, and I want to welcome you to our newest series called Education Matters, where we will explore education-related topics that touch everyone not just formal programs in K-12 and higher education, but also broader issues and information that affect our community. Aloha, I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. I represent the Puna and Ka'u District on the Big Island and the host of Ruderman Roundtable. We're here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. You can join us at thinktechhawaii.com. You can find a link there to uh, to a page where you can see past episodes. And we talk here about good government, environmental issues, and issues of the day facing the state of Hawaii. I'm Russell Ruderman. Please join us for the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. All right, we're back to DeSoto and Martin looking into the past to learn for the future. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the bones of Ward Warehouse. Ward Warehouse. And the next picture is going to demonstrate that. Exactly. And there it is. Um, exposed systems uh, we've got the 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 wood that is holding the place up that's structural with these huge steel clamps with the bolts exposed to show you again the honesty and sort of the strength and the starkness of the building um, i was thinking that the wood looks oversized and it really isn't structurally necessary martin let me know that i'm probably misinterpreting that but regardless 
there's that there's mm -hmm. the, there's the joint right there and not yeah. covered up well principally speaking where where wood is weak at these sort of really strategic points of connections that's mm -hmm. where steel is strong so it's a great marriage of materials and is it overdimensioned or not? I was just saying with the seismic zone we have here and a certain paranoia and, and you know, mm -hmm. dealing with things uh, structurally, you know, it's probably going to end up being the same if we would want to build it. So the second part of the story is the more critical one because the next picture is going to point out something that the building um, is, is in a situation that um, it's going to go down. In, yeah. in August this year, it will be taken down and it will be replaced by something that we're going to uh, show soon. And this picture here I put together by saying don't buy into if someone says um, it's basically going to uh, uh, deteriorate, it's, mm -hmm. this building needs to be taken down. Because in certain parts, yes, mm -hmm. we would also say maybe to sort of lack of maintenance. Because That's right. you know, if you have wood, once painted, always painted, as I tell every client. By the way, client, uh, this at the bottom right is a 300-year farmhouse that my family business basically remodeled and we remodeled it in such a critical way that we had to do some really uh, serious uh, structural surgery and we were able to bring it back to life. I wish I would have kept my 72 Plymouth Fury which had some rust spots which you could fix you know yep. and, and these cars and these these buildings are worth a lot. So that hopefully is not the real reason or certainly not the real reason and the real reason we go to the next picture has to do with capitalism. But don't let's forget, mm -hmm. before we lose that building, yeah. it needs to be reused. And that wood needs to be put into something else. And so you saw some of that damaged wood, but there's good wood in there, and that needs to be Th kept, that's too. That's a perfect point. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah. to that. No, no, but no, that's, that's a when we talk about demolition, perfectly. don't I mean, just trash wood it. Wood is the material with the best uh, potential for Correct. repurposing. Correct. So uh, these pair is, um, uh, thank you, Steve and, and Irene on the left, who we're speaking on behalf of, um, architects of War Warehouse. And to the right is Mr. Richard Meyer, uh, undoubtedly one of the most prolific American architects with his well-deserved position in 20th century architecture, who's going to design the, what they call gateway towers. And uh, the next picture is going to be how it's going to look like. So the same pairing uh, to the right is the new building, which is a high-rise tower, which is fully glazed, uh, which is uh, air-conditioned, and to the left is, is World Warehouse. And we're, we're, we agree to not prejudge the new to come, because also as a practicing architect, I would be stupid to be against evolution. Mm -hmm. If something that's good is going to be replaced by something even better, that is maybe something to be supported. Uh, the Dokomomo part of me and, and you has to look at that a little differently. I and, agree. You know, somewhere there is in the middle is reality. But, but uh, what we want to do is, is sensitize the audience and ourselves uh, uh, for what warehouse really is and the benefits and the advantages, uh, what it has. And, and this picture here is basically uh, also uh, gives me the chance to talk about an event that you see down there on April 29th at 10 a.m. Please all come and do with us Dokomomo's a photo doco, mm -hmm. which is one of our things we do whenever things basically are not going to be around anymore. Particularly, we go and we document the heck out of it yep. because that's the way to go. So well, that's what I, you and I have been doing that on our own mm -hmm. too. We do. In and, prep and for this show, but also because I want to document it as well. And, and the more the better. Yep. And, but this picture again, number 22, shows something that really war Warehouse is pretty good at. That's uh, something that we call today complete streets. Mm -hmm. So you, you create a harmonious uh, coexistence of different uh, vehicular systems your car is right there. You can walk there. Birds are allowed to come in there. The merchants are right there. So it's a pretty, pretty good combination of all of that. If you think about Ella Moana, mm -hmm. you get to drive into this pretty heavy and at times pretty scary monster of parking garages and then go a long ways and That's you're right. finally there and it's just you. And then you got to walk your stuff back. Correct. So this is an interesting thing. Right, right. And this, and this is a lot here, more yeah. human humane. 
It is. Let me just say, it, human humane is right there. That's the at, perfect uh, picture for it, right? For because it is very, it, the scale is nice. It's easy to walk, as you said. It's all, uh, not overwhelming, too. Yeah, yeah. And it's always been like that. And mm -hmm. it was, I mean, even at the time that Ward Warehouse was built in 1975, Ala Moana was there. It was yeah. huge. Yeah. This was a little step in a different direction. Uh huh. And another term, another quality it has, I want to bring into the game. It's inclusive, mm -hmm. right? It's not, and we did a show about the old and the new international marketplace. Correct. And we allowed ourselves to say the original was inclusive. The new one is exclusive. That's right. So we have the same thing here. These chairs where we're sitting and these, these people are sitting in there, everyone can sit there no matter what. You don't have to buy. No one is walking around and forcing you or asking you to leave if you don't consume anything, right? And so also this is actually civic architecture, right? And you also were pointing out that the mix of tenants in Ward Warehouse is a lot more yes. local. It's a lot more small scale. It's mom and pop. And it is not necessarily things that you can't survive without, and yet it is a wonderful batch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and absolutely. it's very appealing. It's a very appealing place to walk around and have a good time. It absolutely is. So, so all these criteria, you know, we, we put as checklists, as check marks to be then rechecked and revisited yeah. when Correct. the new one is coming. Correct. Is coming up, and, and, and we will see. And coming back to the point again that you, you, you did uh, so well, let's talk about the nature of the beast. How I like to share that with my emerging uh, talents and myself as well, that, that an, uh, an, a piece of architecture should have a, a very specific uh, uh, tectonic and ma materiality strategy. So Steve is so kind to say, well, you know, I'm actually not unhappy that it goes away because it was only, which you already mentioned, right. it was only meant to be provisionary. That's right. Temporary. Right. But as we know in life, the temporary things mostly Can last the longest, That's right. right? In many has. other ways of life. Yeah. And and then they have proven to to be to be worth more than than you you expected them to be. So Initially. this is a great compliment actually to what has that it has more than doubled his lifespan, yes. uh, two and a half times, you know, yes. and, and this is a great quality. Yes. And then we come to your point that we promised to dig into deeper, that if you make it out of steel, well, you can, you can recycle steel, but you need a heavy industry to do that. You need a big oven and create yeah. thousands of degrees of, uh, of temperature to, right. to melt that. And, and re reuse it and very energy uh, intensive the same applies to concrete you can and one does yes. that you grind yes. it down you powderize it you can mix it into other but it's a heavy process but we all know what it takes wood wood it just needs a sander you take these multiple layers of paint off and you were pointing out that some of these beams are protected they look they look really good they right? look fabulous and i'm not even sure if you you know, the availability of wood of that size mm -hmm. 30, 40 years later, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But mm -hmm. again, as you said, you could either burn it for energy, you could let it decompose, or yeah. reuse yeah. it. And, and you so talked about how to reuse it, too. Thank you for the sick weighing. Yes. Yeah, and there's a, we have a tradition, a, a young tradition, that we, we conclude every show with an optimistic view out. Mm -hmm. And this is like learning from the past for the yes. future. Correct. Uh, Correct. Emphasis on future. Correct. And And the next picture is looking one last time at, at the existing one that it has a certain notion of exotic. Yes. And it hasn't just to do with the plants in there. There's a certain uh, ambiguity, and there's actually, I, I really feel sorry we haven't, both of us, shame on us, uh, bad duel, uh -oh. we haven't taken a picture of that awesome civic auditorium uh, at the very at the very um, oh, yeah. end of it. Oh, I where, did. Where I did, but I didn't send it okay, to you. But okay, I do. Good. I do have so some. Sh yes. Shame, blame. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm no. do more. But people go there. People yes, check this out. Do. This is a powerful civic place mm -hmm. where there are low key events of little people of. You know, everyone inclusive. That's right. And and it's 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 not stiff. It doesn't feel staged. You know, That's the right. one at the international marketplace is like, well, this is all set up, right? right. But this is basically almost like grassrooty. People yes. just pop up. It's a pop up place. Yes, and people it is. Just do it it right? is. That's very true. That's so these very are true. these qualities it really has. Yeah. And if we go to the next picture, that's our proposal. That's also that hopefully the uh, the tenants will the ones who haven't found a new place. And right. I'm thinking maybe some can't afford to be in the new one because of the high, uh, you know, investment that needs to be returned, return of investment, and so they might not be able to afford it anymore. So by now, uh, two um, dozen of generations of emerging talents uh, and myself have thought about how we can scoop them up. 
mm -hmm. the tenants. And, and this is our proposal for uh, basically my favorite place to buy books and CDs. This is BookUp. Yes. And BookUp, last time I found a CD and I asked where they're going next so I can look forward to it. They said they might not know yet or they don't know yeah. yet. So they might not go anywhere. And this might actually... Um, you know, ap ap um, uh, apply to, to others too, yes. which, which we're afraid of. Yes. So we're, uh, the, the, next, the next one is another of our uh, most favorite local places. This is Paina Cafe. So Paina Cafe and, uh, needs to go somewhere and we would love to have Paina Cafe in uh, our project, which is Primitiva. We have introduced her already a couple of times. Yes. She's a vertical development. Yes. But in their logic, she's very much like uh, many other projects from the, from the good old days. And this is how there she is. Uh, could, would look like from, uh, from the distance, right? And if you go back to the picture before, you had that super genius idea that uh, you needed to tell me we see a lot of wood in there. Yeah. Where does that come from? Let's recycle Ward Warehouse building. Let's recycle the wood from, from the Ward Warehouse as it's demolished. And it would be even more wonderful to recycle it into the new building on the site, into the place that would benefit from it very much. Mm -hmm. And the Paina mm -hmm. Cafe wood environment would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. so, so we can almost call it a reincarnation. That's right. It's right. almost a reincarnation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In any case... Uh, whether that's going to happen or not, um, we do need to document what's what's been in the past. We need to document Ward Warehouse, which is a really iconic structure, mm -hmm. and it's in a very prominent location. It has been very visible ever since it opened. Yeah. It was very trendy at the time. It was very kind of cutting edge. Mm -hmm. um, it was something that we could be proud of that Honolulu had mm -hmm. that looked very different and looked cool and modern for mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And obviously, for somebody like me who is old enough, there are a lot of memories of it, too. Thank you very Fond much memories. for that perfect closing keynote. And thank you also, Steve and Irene, for trusting in yeah. us. And once again, we're going to be back with a show, uh, with two shows about uh, your very, very important and relevant work for our islands here. So thank you very much. Thank you. And see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>